Right. It is uh, once again a distinct pleasure of mine to introduce our next keynote speaker, Ms. Carrie Bridges. Um, Carrie Bridges RG is the director and state geologist of the Missouri Geological Survey, a division of the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. Ms. Bridges holds a Bachelor of Science degree in geology from the University of Central Missouri and a Master of Science degree in geology from the University of Missouri at Columbia. She is licensed in Missouri as a registered geologist. Ms. Bridges has over 24 years of experience in a variety of roles with the department, managing environmental and geological investigations in areas of hazardous waste remediation, waste disposal, economic geology, natural resource stewardship, and geologic hazards. As state geologist, Ms. Bridges works to develop policy that serves Missouri's interests at the state and federal level related to geologic, soil, and water resource issues. She serves on six state boards and commissions, including the State Oil and Gas Council, the Missouri Mining Commission, um, and the Missouri Board of Geologists Registration, and the Industrial Minerals Advisory Council. In addition, she also represents Missouri's interests with the Interstate Oil and Gas uh, Compact Commission. We are um, very fortunate to have this opportunity to also thank Ms. Bridges for serving on our very own Missouri S&T's um, O'Keefe Institute Advisory Board and for serving on the University of Missouri's Geology Development Board. Please thank me in welcoming Ms. Bridges. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you for um, having me here today. Um, so this morning, Cheryl Seeger from our Missouri Geological Survey spoke about a lot of the great projects that MGS is working on. And this afternoon, I wanted to focus on the recruitment and retention uh, strategies for the workforce to do this important work. And I think um, what I'm going to talk about dovetails really nicely into the previous, uh, with the previous presentation, um, to get a little more specific about some of the programs uh, that, that we have and that we're working on. Make sure I point this in the right direction. All right. So, um, created in 1853 to collect and distribute information about Missouri's water, mineral, and energy resources, MGS is the longest standing division within the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. Um, our mission uh, is to provide earth science information and services about Missouri's water, mineral, soil, and energy resources to benefit soil conservation, public health and safety, environmental protection, and economic development. So state geological surveys really continue to uh, play an important role by providing unbiased and sound geologic information to the public, industry, academia, and government agencies for a variety of decision-making purposes, including economic and environmental impact, such as critical minerals sector. Um, our department has five values that represent what our agency inspires to be, and these were crowdsourced for the, from the entire MoDNR and r team. So this includes stewardship, integrity, collaboration, respect, and innovation. Um, with stewardship, we care for our resources. For integrity, we strive for excellence by doing the right thing. Collaboration, we build relationships to pursue common goals. Respect, we empower diverse perspectives. And innovation, uh, we implement creative solutions. So as we all know, the critical minerals workforce is in high demand to fulfill the ever-increasing opportunities across the sector. Um, with declining enrollment in geoscience and other related programs, employers really need some robust recruitment and retention strategies to attract, develop, and retain our team members. Um, today, I want to cover some of the items that we are doing to focus on recruitment and retention. Um, some of these things most employers are already doing, but I also want to share some of the programs that we have that may be a little more um, unique to our agency and are driven by those values that I showed in the previous slide. So working for MGS and, and overall the Department of Natural Resources really fulfills a calling for many of our employees, um, but while the mission uh, of the organization and the intrinsic value of the work is a piece of that recruitment puzzle, uh, prospective and new employees are looking for more from their work experience. Um, 
so we have you know, some testimonials here. The scientific work that the Missouri Geological Survey performs often goes unseen, but I feel that helping assess and protect the natural resources of the state allows me to in some way give back to society and the citizens of Missouri. Because I have a passion for not only geology, but our natural resources in general, and by working for the survey, I get to be a part of that each and every day. And what I love about working for the Missouri Geological Survey is being surrounded by people who are enthusiastic and passionate about what they do. It is also a workplace where constant learning is encouraged and supported. So again, this, this falls to the, the calling, to the mission, also the culture and the environment that we strive to achieve. So we focus on providing a positive work-life balance for team members. And again, a lot of these things, you know, most employers have, we've got flexible work schedules, paid parental leave, 14 paid holidays, uh, generous paid annual leave and sick leave, and paid military leave, disaster relief leave, and bereavement leave. Um, we make physical and mental well-being a priority. So we've got you know, the typical insurance plans, plus we have some wellness incentives and, and other programs. Um, we also have what we call our Strive Employee Life and Family or SELF program that has a lot of programs to help you reduce stress, to improve your health, um, enhance your work-life balance, have some financial advising and, and other types of things. We also have opportunities to support financial wellness. Um, we have a public service loan forgiveness program. Um, we do provide tuition assistance to our team members. We have paid life insurance. Um, team members are vested. We have a vested retirement after five years. Um, we also have a deferred compensation match up to $75 a month. And we have a, a statewide team member discounts for things like on your AT&T or you know, to buy a computer or travel op opportunities and other things. Um, some of these are just some added perks for folks. Um, one of the things that we've learned in recruiting, particularly engineers, um, is that um, some of the items that, that are required to do the job aren't always provided by the employer. Um, and so we found that it's beneficial for us to highlight this in recruitment materials because you know, some places require people to bring their own computers and laptops, require them to have their own vehicle, that type of thing. So, um, we've, we've kind of collected these things to make that sales pitch of, of what it is that we provide that they don't have to bring to the table. You know, like the software licenses, we've got fleet vehicles, we provide you all your personal protective equipment. Um, we also have a talent and development team that facilitates our technical training, professional development, diversity, inclusion, and belonging topics. Um, and we also have access to the entire LinkedIn learning catalog um, and some state of Missouri custom content. So really, you know, we, we want our team members to be successful in their roles and have what they need to do that. And, and the picture that I included here I really like because this is our XRF and we did an in-house training on how to use this equipment for all of our team members to have hands-on um, with one of our experts that, that kind of developed uh, the training and learned all about the equipment. We also support professional development. So we do pay for the study materials, um, subscription fees. Uh, we pay for our team members to study and pay for them to take the test for their professional licensure. Um, we also um, pay, pay and reimburse for the examinations for their professional board application fees, um, their license renewals, professional organization memberships, conference attendance like this. Um, we have mentoring provided by experienced geoscience professionals. Um, we also have paid trainings and a budget for the continuing education needs. Um, being part of a bigger agency, we also have some cross-media training opportunities, um, and we've got the paid work and, and travel expenses. So we try to make it easy to apply and for people to find information about our vacancies. So we do have a QR code you know, for folks. We have a, our Mo Careers website that lists all of our vacancies. Um, but we also do have some hard to fill positions. So particularly our geoscientists, our engineers, um, we have developed um, basically a, a career sheet publication to describe some of the benefits that we offer to showcase the career, to showcase what it is that you do. Um, and we're able to hand these out and provide these to students. And I know you can't really see that, but it gives you an idea that um, you know, we have a lot of that same information that I just provided. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, we do have career, uh, recruiters that attend career and job fairs and other recruitment events, including our MGS-hosted student colloquium where students have the opportunity to present their research. So it gives them that opportunity. It gives us opportunity to interact. We invite professionals and folks from professional organizations um, from the state universities to come. And so it's a good opportunity for them to interact with these students as well. It's a great recruitment opportunity for folks, including us. Um, but we have what we call a full cycle recruiting uh, program that started in August of 2022. And this really focuses on the partnership between the hire managers and the candidates. So our talent acquisition coordinators are essentially our sales team. They're the first point of contact for a candidate and they maintain their relationship with them throughout that process. Um, and so they reach out, they try to see quality candidates, they screen the applicants, they conduct intake meetings, they assist with the onboarding of the new team member once they've started. And um, from my experience, they're a big help to the hiring manager because a lot of times the hiring manager, they don't do that very often. That's not their experience, their expertise. So having these folks to guide them through the process, but also to be that contact and that help for the applicant um, has really been beneficial for us. Probably one of our most successful recruiting tools is internships. Um, we have a robust, organized intern program that's designed to expose interns to a variety of the work we do. Um, we focus on using our internships as a recruiting tool for our difficult to fill positions. In the past, many times interns have been used to do just, you know, scanning and, and some types of data entry and things like that. And we're really trying to focus on getting them more hands-on experience um, to assist us but also be a benefit for both the interns as well as the agency. Thanks to their contributions and the unique perspectives of the young professionals, um, it also gives them a time, a, you know, time to try out to see what it's like to work at a state agency. Um, and it gives us that opportunity to see what kind of worker and employee that, that intern is going to be. Some of the other elements of our internship program um, is professional skills development. So our recruiters and our HR folks uh, work with them on interviewing skills resume building, cover letter building. Um, we also have a job insights panel that has team members who can talk about their jobs and followed by a Q&A with the interns. So it gives them that interactive experience instead of just giving the assignment and you know putting them in an office. We do average about 30 to 40 interns agency-wide. I'd say we're probably more about 10 throughout the Missouri Geological Survey part of the agency. Um, we have found that interns do not necessarily have solid career plans when they begin their internships with us. And so it gives us the opportunity to showcase the diversity of career paths that we do offer. You know, they're coming in, they're looking for some experience, they're looking for summer work, um, but this really helps them explore those areas. Um, you know, bringing in some folks that they may not be an economic geologist, um, but we can put them to work on some of these things and train them and get them interested and get that spark in those areas. Our interns routinely return for additional internships or even full-time employment after graduating. And so um, one of our newest hires who is here today, Kagan Froning, um, he was an intern for us for two years throughout his graduate studies and we have just recently hired him on um, in our critical minerals group. Um, and I will say that that group is, is really a success story for interns. Cheryl Seeger started as an intern many years ago. <laughs> What'd you say? It was two thirds of the 25% of the time MGS has been around. So her first, first experience was as an intern. Um, you know, the, the other folks in that group, they all started as interns. Kyle, Elizabeth, Vicki, I can name several. Um, so it's been a successful recruiting uh, measure for us. And oftentimes it's folks that that's not necessarily the career path that they might have thought about in you know, exploring economic geology. So shifting to some of our retention strategies, and, and this is what I really wanted to delve in a little more detail for everyone. Um, first of all is our quarterly poll survey, and this is administered by the State Office of Administration, so all state agencies participate um, in this survey that they conduct quarterly, and it's really meant to understand the agency's organizational health and how they progress on major cross-departmental initiatives. Because it's like anything, if you don't measure it, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, and you're not getting on the scale, and you're not tracking what you're eating, and you continue to just eat those hamburgers and french fries, you're not gonna make any progress. So, you know, you wanna have these strategies that you, you put into place, you also have to measure to see if they're working. 
Um, it gathers observations on how we are working together. Um, we do it quarterly, but we shift up the questions to cover different areas each quarter. Um, we also have the ability to ask custom questions, things like, do you feel recognized and appreciated um, on a one to five scale? Do you find joy and satisfaction in your work? We also generally have an open text comment field because if we don't, people will find a way to put it in one of the other questions. <laughs> so it's like, is there anything else you wanna tell us is a common one that we ask. Um, and, and it's a great way for us to get that feedback um, it, it shows us what our strengths are, as well as some suggestions to make us even better. And we do share these results with our team um, in all team meetings, in you know, local staff meetings, and, and talk about it. Because many of the things that I'm going to talk about really arose from these surveys. And through these surveys, then we can see the impact that these programs and strategies have. So one of them is um, the DNR Leadership Institute. And this is an opportunity for participants who, um, they get advanced professional development for high performing colleagues with aspirations to serve as leaders. Um, the objective is to prepare the participants to succeed as leaders in their current roles while also preparing them for future leadership opportunities. Um, the participants attend various trainings. They're assigned a capstone project and work in work groups that they then present to the department executive leadership team. And some of these capstone pro projects and topics often um, are some of these um, programs that we've developed and rolled out because of their suggestions and because of their insights. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this does enhance our internal candidate pool and it helps with that long-term succession planning across the agency. Um, the department has had some form of a leadership program since 2007. Um, we also have what we call the Mo DNR Way, and so this is modeled somewhat after the Missouri Way, which has been a leadership training program. Um, this is a transformational program that helps team members understand the Mo DNR values that I talked about earlier, um, build stronger working relationships, strengthen a culture that inspires and empowers trust. Um, it, it really is to help, you know, learn how to, to do the work better, what the expectations are, you know, what is the DNR way to approach things, to be pragmatic, um, to problem solve, uh, to, to do your project management. And so peers and leaders throughout the organization facilitate these learning sessions. Um, we piloted it in June and are rolling it out department-wide in the coming months. The Mo DNR Mentor Program is also a fairly new program. It encourages team members to connect with others to build strong and trusting relationships that motivate and guide towards success in future career goals. Mentoring is a proven approach to encourage um, ample learning and career development for both the mentees and the mentors. And it benefits Mo DNR by increasing our talent retention, our promotion rates, and our team member satisfaction. Um, one of the things that we do that really arose out of COVID is we have a weekly update call for the whole department. Um, it started as kind of updates when people were being sent home, we didn't know what was going on, um, to share information, and really it's become a way to continue to con connect and make everyone feel close together. But one of the things that we do is we recognize promotions during those weekly meetings. And so that way people can see, yes, people are being promoted from within. Yes, there are opportunities. Oh, that person was promoted, that means their job is vacant. You know, th those types of things, right? Um, so, so those things have really helped us out. Um, we also have a group that we call our informal influencers. So we know we, all, we have leaders, but we have a lot of people who lead, you know, from within. And these informal influencers are nominated by their coworkers, so they're recognized as people who have influence, that people go to, that people trust. And they're really pivotal in advising our executive staff on various topics, including effective communication, priorities, new initiatives, how these things are rolling out and how they're being received. And the agency really relies on input from these informal influencers to help manage change effectively and take the pulse of staff to see what's going on. Because the leaders can nod their heads and say, yes, things are great. But we can hear from this group to see, you know, how are things truly going? Um, we, we provide stewardship opportunities as well for our team members, and so this is kind of a, an extra perk for folks. Um, it engages them in stewardship opportunities, allowing them to volunteer in the 93 parks and historic sites in the state. So Missouri State Parks is a division within the Department of Natural Resources. Um, 
to inspire participation in activities directly impacting or benefiting the, the department's mission and that align with our values, particularly stewardship. Um, team members are encouraged to participate in these department-sponsored or sanctioned special events, projects, outreach, training. You know, we have folks that participate in Earth Day and the State Fair. Um, but activities don't necessarily have to relate directly to the team members' regularly assigned job duties. So they can participate in lakeshore cleanups, trail cleanups, and basic invasive species eradication and other projects. So it, it gives them a change of pace. Get out of the office for the day or get away from their regular routine and go do something because you know a lot of people, as I said, are at the Department of Natural Resources because of the mission, you know, because of the, the personal impact that it has on them. Um, some of the other programs um, that we have, we have a Professional and Leadership Development Award. So this is a $1,500 award um, to the top 10% of team members to use toward their professional development. And so that's based on their performance ratings, and we give it out once a year. People use it for a lot of different things. They go to trainings. They may purchase you know, books and reading materials or other things that they come back and they share with their colleagues. And so this has been um, really great to not only impact that one person, but impact their whole team. We have a, a walk-a-mile program, um, which is a job shadow program that gives team members opportunity to spend time with another team member to gain insights from their day-to-day -day and see the challenges that are faced by others. So again, this is, can be kind of cross-media, cross-divisional. Um, you know, we've had some folks from our administrative deport, uh, support division come and follow our folks that go do sinkhole investigations um, for the day. And it, it just gives them a better appreciation. And, and for some folks, it may be, hey, I'm looking for a change. It gives them an opportunity to explore that, what are the other areas of the department are doing. So you know, it still keeps them within our agency if they're looking to move around and make a change. We have a team member spotlight award, and this is a peer-to-peer -peer recognition that gives team members opportunity to recognize other team members for praiseworthy actions. And we generally tie these back to our values and how they've displayed those values. Um, we have a career planning partnership. This is a strategic partnership that creates a development plan to help define a route for the team member's professional and personal development. So they can talk with their supervisor about what their goals are and map out some things to help them achieve those goals and achieve that advancement. And kind of a fun thing, we have a bring a child to work day. Um, and so we do set up a lot of hands-on activities and booths. And this has been really popular with our folks. Um, you know, they bring their children, their grandchildren, nieces, nephews, whomever. Um, and those kids, it can kind of be a recruitment for them, too. They learn a lot about what we do, and they can get excited about these things. And our team building activities. So I think these are really important. And, and you know, I've been meeting one-on-one -on -one with a lot of our team members. And one of the things that I hear a lot is that they really enjoy these team building activities. They say, we don't want to have too many, obviously. But having you know, a few a year really helps them get to know each other, gel as a team, learn about what each other does, gets them outside their immediate work group. So you know, we organized field trips. We went to a limestone quarry not too long ago. Um, we have retreats in certain areas. Again, being um, in the same agency as our state parks, we get to utilize their facilities sometimes, and, and those are great places to host those. We have a monthly speaker series where we used to invite some external folks, but we've um, switched that over to where we have our internal team members talking about you know, what it is that they do, um, what are some neat projects they're working on, what's some research that they've done, and gives that opportunity to folks to learn more about each other. A shorter version of that is our project spotlights that we do in our monthly all team meetings. Um, we have someone talk about 10 or 15 minutes just about a project that they're working on. And again, you know, with, with our division, we've got 140 positions um, over six different programs. And so people are learning um, across for, for what the others are doing. And team appreciation events. So things like um, our fall picnic, where we have a washers tournament. Um, we have a snack cart that we've taken around once a year. And, and it, amazingly, people were so excited about the snack cart. Um, an ice cream social, you know, team member of the month. Any of these kind of recognition things um, that just give everybody a boost. So, you know, 
your current employees really can be your best recruiters. If they enjoy working there, they're going to talk to their friends. They're going to talk to, you know, their classmates. Um, a lot of folks that we hire initially are straight out of college, and we have a lot of success in developing them than within. But we've had folks, for example, in our dam and reservoir safety program where a lot of our team members now that we've been hiring know or went to school with existing team members, and they're like, hey, come work here. This is a great place to work. You'll really like it. So ultimately, you know, 53% of people say they would have stayed longer at their company if they felt more appreciated. 81% say they are motivated to work harder when they are appreciated. And this is results from a study by Glassdoor. Um, so ultimately, showing an appreciation, showing support for your team really makes a difference in your recruitment and in your retention efforts.